It's time to judge y'all once again. Thank you to our final patrons, Strawbones, Order 4765, Midnight Gem Lord, and Sean. Now, before we have this breakdown slash discussion of the breakdowns and discussions that we've had in the community tab, please do favor to leave your own thoughts on the community tab in the comments section down below. Leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, hit that little notification will see us out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also, I do have a Patreon down below in support for so as one, count them one, dollar a month. You like exclusive videos, early content, and more. You also now become a member of the channel for as little as three dollars a month to get the same perks and more. Now, uh, let's hop into the discussion. What's up, guys? I'm the Pencil here, and here we are to review and analyze your answers, the community's answers to certain discussions questions that I posted on the community tab of the channel. And of course, of course, everyone has free right to participate in these. So if you were one of the many votes, I hope your opinion is met or maybe not met here. But let's not waste any more time. Let's hop right into the first question from three weeks ago. Fortnite to the Apocalypse fans, I've got to know. Do you think Nakaba Suzuki is alluding to the mysterious history of a possible clan or group of demon goddess hybrids through the usage of the word Nephilim, meaning Tristan is not the first and there are others like him in the past or even present? Or do you think a word is simply a word brought from our world, meaning it has no real implications on a previously existing species? Pick a choice and let me know why down below. You had two options. Plot. It is such a specific word it must have a history to it. Or no plot, it is just a common word used, no real hidden story. And admittedly, I hate to say it, I hate to open up like this, but it appears that y'all were in fact tripping. Because with the 67% of the vote, no plot, it's just a common word used, no real hidden story. And here's the thing, right? I do kind of, I definitely see where y'all come from on this. I can definitely see it, you know, like, obviously, Nakaba's pulled in words occasionally, like, he even pulled out a word really recently, that has a lot of implications in our world that really doesn't make sense at the time of Arthurian mythology, especially if we're going by the whole, like, historically accurate stuff, it just doesn't make sense. But Nephilim, I don't know, I don't know, it feels like such a big word, like, at least it has to have some history, like, I can definitely agree with some of y'all, y'all were going off in the comments to talk about how well... Entirely likely that due to the fact that light and darkness and seven deadly sins are fundamentally opposed to each other, light literally eating away at darkness and darkness fighting back against the light, that a pure Nephilim, like one that is just half demon and half goddess, may just never exist because it would automatically destroy itself. Like it may like literally just not even get to be born yet because, you know, suffering. However, considering the word exists, I think there could at least be a history of, like, it was theorized. It was understood. It was a possibility that had crossed both species' mind, and the word was born. And that would explain why Melascula and other characters are able to recognize Tristan as a Nephilim and be like, Hey, I, 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 know, I know what you are. And that could really fit into the whole narrative. Because we know that the demons and goddesses both weren't like idiots. Like, they sure, they were very, very mean and dumb to each other. But in reality, they both had scholars. They both had people like the original Gother, And obviously, we must have had some sort of scholars on the goddess side. I don't have a specific character to name. But we had to have some people that were at least somewhat interested in hypothetical sciences in the entire world. And I could definitely see the idea of Nephilim sort of just coming around as like a hypothetical theory of what could happen. And then the whole concept of it getting banned because, you know, the Supreme Deity and the Demon King definitely would not their, well, <laughs> English, would definitely not want their species intermingling and, like, coexisting and obviously producing a kid. Obviously, neither of them would be down with that, so I can definitely see the idea of the word existing and Tristan being the first example of it. And so, that's kind of backed by the fact that Gelda and Zeldris didn't even think it was possible. Like, hypothetically, I can definitely see where the no-plot people are coming from, but at the same time, once again... If there was so much backlash against it, man, that film may just be in hiding. I don't know. I have faith. Nagab is a weird guy. Like, he, he he's definitely willing to drop some weird, secret, dumb stuff in, like, a line or a word or stuff like that. And it's not, like, the more recent modern word that was thrown into the manga for a joke. Like, this was a word that was specifically thrown out there, given parentheses and everything. Like, all this, it was, it, there was too much weight put on it for me to really believe that Nagab was just like, eh, whatever, people know what this is, and just threw it in there. So, I don't know. I'm definitely believing y'all were a little bit, y'all were tripping just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. That's only one tripping. Let's move on to the next one. 
Next, we had Seven Deadly Sins and Four Nights of the Apocalypse fans. Do you believe Las Vegas and its ship has sailed? And we'll never get to see Meliodas pull out the full potential of his duplication ability, or do you think there is hope still? We may see the weapon of the king used to its greatest level in Four Nights. Pick a choice and let me know why down below. And with 107 votes, we had two options. Hope, there's still a chance. I know Mel can make this right. And despair, there is no chance. I know Mel can make it work. And, like, I wish I was, I wish I was as hopeful as y'all. Because I have to say y'all are tripping on this one. Mainly because, like, if Meliodas didn't use it well when he was actually, like, the main character and the ability could have been used and he didn't even whip it out against Arthur in a situation where it literally would have been perfect, the main Meliodas fights off the real Arthur while clone Meliodas holds down Demon Tristan. Like, if we really had that fake setup at the end for Lance to step in and do his thing and Mel still didn't use it, I don't think we're ever going to get to use it. Once again, in that video, I kind of talked about how I think why Dagaba doesn't use it too often. He may just be afraid of another uh, blonde-eyed cloning character and a lot of accusations coming about that. He used it to the same degree that that other blonde-eyed... Blonde-eyed. <laughs> the other blonde character uses their cloning technique a lot. Yeah, I get it, but I, I just don't think it's going to happen. I'm 100% actually leaning into the fact that I don't think we're ever actually going to get to see Meliodas have a proper fight at this point. I think he's just going to get sealed. Or like off screen, not off screen. I, I highly doubt he's going to get off screen. But I think he's going to try to have a fight and then immediately get sealed by the coffin that was stolen by the Knights of Camelot and stuff like that. I don't know. Maybe we'll have one big final battle at the end, but I think we have too many other characters that we need to focus on with too many other more interesting abilities that Nakaba has actually shown willingness to use, like Herod, like Gideon, like King and the Spirit Spear, like Bon and Kuratruz. Like There are so many other people that need their own spotlight and considering nakaba's just seemingly avoidance of the weapon at all costs really the clones get used like a total of four or five times in the entire manga despite meli was having it for at least half of the manga yeah obviously I, I just don't have hope i'm sorry i'm despairing right here right now i know all the percy fans are like no don't despair have hope but i don't know i'm just filled with this bottomless despair so i'm gonna have to say despite only 20 percent of y'all being with me Y'all were spitting, and the 80% of y'all were tripping. So the community, I don't know. We're batting 0-2 right now. Let's hope y'all were spitting at least a little bit. Some way, somehow. And the next one we have is Seven Deadly Sins and Fortnite the Apocalypse fans. I must know, with us seeing Arthur in action, seeing some of his realm, and getting a better understanding of his new characterization, do you think he mastered the powers of chaos over the 16 year time skip, or does he still have a long way to go? Pick a choice and let me know why down below. And out of 119 votes, you guys had two options. Master, bro made a realm, multiple people, and is vibing out. And no master, his realm, his people, and himself are all unstable. And Bless y'all, bless the 80% of y'all, because y'all who said no master are spitting. I just don't think he's mastered it. At this point, like, I know Arthur and Chaos and all that is inherently chaotic and weird and stuff like that, but I don't know, this doesn't seem to make sense. Like, the fact that it's called a kingdom of illusions and secrets and all that, like, obviously... All things aren't functioning all too right. The world just flat out doesn't look right. Arthur doesn't seem to be right in the head. Like, nothing is 100% right and or okay about Camelot right now. And obviously, it feeds into the whole villain dynamic, and it makes Arthur really, really cool, and it has a great aesthetic, and it gives Camelot a much different feel to the rest of Britannia. So I get why it is, but I do think, like, all that combined with what we've seen so far really just makes it seem like Arthur's kind of winging it. Like he, like, he doesn't know exactly what he's doing, but he's hoping for the best. He's kind of just throwing darts at a wall and seeing what sticks. And that's that's okay. Don't get me wrong, Arthur. It's not we're, not we're not shaming you or anything, but I don't think you're going to be a master ever, realistically. Like, you're not a master now by your lack of control and your lack of understanding. And I don't think you'll ever be a master just at the rate the story's going. Like, I think you'll be stopped one way or another before you somehow master the powers of chaos. Or maybe chaos will end up mastering you. We'll see. We'll see. So overall, I do agree. Y'all were definitely spitting on this one. All 80% of y'all. The 20% of y'all, I can see it. I can see it. Definitely. Like, obviously, making a realm, making people, having the level of control that he does where he can just flicker on and off between the chaos eyes where before he kind of, like, did it all subconsciously. Yeah, I, I definitely get where y'all are coming from, but I don't know. I think there's too much instability there. I think too many things seem a bit, a bit off, a bit weird, a bit goofy about chaos and arthur's level of control over it i don't know i'm not exactly 100 percent seeing it but i will agree with the 80 percent of the community 
out of 119 goals, y'all were definitely spitting. Now, let's move on to the next one, our penultimate. Four Nights of the Apocalypse fans, I must know, do you think Percival is the best possible main character that the sequel series could have had, or do you think that some other character should have stepped up and taken on the mantle? Pick a choice and let me know why down below. And this out of 121 votes was left with two options. Perfect, Percival embodies the whole series himself. He is him and imperfect. We're not gonna act like there weren't other good options. And overall, with 80% of the vote, I hereby declare with the power invested in me, that y'all were spin. 75% of y'all went with perfect. Personal embodies the whole series himself. He is him. And yeah, I was definitely selling this. Like, the discussion video itself was literally Percival is the perfect main character for the story of Four Nights of the Apocalypse. So I think my opinion was pretty much put out there from the start. I just kind of wanted to see the community consensus. I'm going to assume. No, no. I know it's a bad thing. I shouldn't assume. But I'm going to assume a lot of people wanted Tristan to be the main character. Either Tristan or Lance. Maybe there's like two Gawain fans out there that really want Gawain to be the main character. But at least if the series is going to be called Four Nights of the Apocalypse, I'm assuming people really wanted the Sons of the Seven Deadly Sins to be the big leaders, the ones guiding it all. But I can definitely understand how Percy is still the main character. I still love him. I still think he works. I think he fits the new style that Four Nights is being written in in comparison to the original series. Once we hit 100 chapters, I will make a video showing you how different the pacing between these two series is. Because trust me, the pacing is absolutely bonkers in the original series in comparison to four nights and i think percy fits that slower healthier developmental story and world building pacing much better than i think any other main character could mainly just because of their ties to the world or their general disinterest in it gawain doesn't care about the world she, she couldn't care less she cares about isold's world her moon if you will same thing with Anne. that's it Meanwhile, Lancelot and Tristan, they have the whole world downloaded 4K HD into their head, and they have their own very specific goals. Tristan doesn't even want to travel. He just wants to live his life with his parents and his family and have a good day. Meanwhile, Lancelot just wants to save his mentor, go back home, and vibe. Meanwhile, Percival was isolated on a rock for a whole bunch of time, so he, obviously he wants to explore the world, and I think that works. It gives us a character that wants to learn more about the world as we want to learn more about the world. It all works out. Everybody's happy. Everything's good. Bada bing, bada boom. He's the perfect main character. Y'all, we're indubitably spin. So now, once again, we're hit with a tie. Let's see what this tiebreaker has to bring. Moving on to the final question of today's video. We have Fortnite the Apocalypse. Fans, please, I must know, in the mighty mysterious case of Merlin of Belialuin, the second in command to the King of Chaos of Camelot, do we believe that she is cooking? Is she in the kitchen right now, prepping up a mysterious scheme of some sort? Or in reality, is she sort of just standing by, waiting, watching, truly following behind all of Arthur's whims? Pick a choice and let me know why down below. And out of 106 votes, you had two options. The cook! She is her. She is making magic in the kitchen right this instant. And no, Cook. She has done and said nothing. There is no chef there. And in hindsight, <laughs> hindsight being 2020, golly gee willikers, I, like, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm gonna say y'all were spent for this. I'm gonna go with the 80% of y'all and say, the cook, she is her, she's making magic in the kitchen right now. But the thing is, the people, the 20% of y'all out of 106 votes who said, no cook, she has done and said nothing, there's no chef there, were actually ended up being right. Like, fundamentally ended up being right. Because Merlin wasn't there. We have not seen Merlin. Like, the real Merlin from Seven Deadly Sins has not actually made her debut appearance in Four Nights yet. Because now we know the Merlin with Arthur was a fake. It was a fairy that was captured. So, realistically, I, I'm wondering if I should, like, just on the fact that y'all are literally right. Like, I'm not sure if I should give this to Trippin. Or, no, I should, I should say <laughs> I'm Trippin. Because, like... Y'all who said no cook were literally just flat out right. Like, you were just correct. Or I should go with the idea that 80% that she's cooking. Because she obviously is now. If she's not with Arthur, she's up against them. She's make, cooking up a redemption arc right now. Doing other things. Hypothetically having a hand in Gawain's plot and stuff like that. Then she's cooking. But at the same time, we don't know. Because she's not there. She's literally not there. <laughs> There's no chef in the kitchen because we haven't even seen the kitchen. We don't know where she's cooking or how she's cooking. So I'm not sure. Like, would it be anticlimactic for me to end on, like, a neutral? I don't know. 
I'm going to say spitting because I do agree with the 80%. And I do think, considering she isn't there, she is cooking. So I am going to say spitting won this time. I'm, I forget which. I think spitting won last time too, just barely. So we, we're having a good solid competitive ratio. No, one, There hasn't been a blowout just yet. But still, the 20% of y'all, I can definitely respect it. Y'all, are y'all Nakaba? Uh, 20, how, mu how much was 20%? Like 20 y'all people, are y'all Nakaba? <laughs> are y'all writing the plot behind the scenes? Like how, how did y'all know that? <laughs> how did she know she wasn't there? But overall... Thank you guys for participating in these polls. Make sure you get your inputs in on all the polls. I love reading your comments. I love responding to them. I love reading all these things and making these videos. These are fun. These are definitely fun to go through and review these considering when I do discussion videos now, I don't typically drop those. I only drop the discussions at the beginning of like four nights chapters or chapters I reviewed later in the day. So overall, I really appreciate all participation on these polls. They lead to videos like this and I hope you guys really enjoyed. Thank you guys for watching. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Subscribe and make sure that little notification bell supers out on every videos that come to the channel. Also, also I do have a Patreon down below. It's more for as low as one count of one dollar a month. The links to the videos, early content, and more. You also now become a member of the channel for as low as three dollars a month to get the same perks and more. Now, thank you guys so much for watching once again, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is that the pencil riding off.